You won't believe this. The company building America's next generation warships was dismissed by defense experts as nothing more than a cruise ship manufacturer. Here's a scene that will blow your mind. It's 2020, and the US Navy is awarding its most critical frigate contract to Fincantieri, an Italian shipbuilder that everyone assumed only knows how to build floating hotels for tourists. For decades, naval analysts insisted that serious warship construction belonged to American, British, and German yards. Italy was stereotyped as the nation that built beautiful cruise liners, but could never compete in the deadly serious business of military shipbuilding. But then something incredible happened. This cruise ship company became the quiet architect of NATO's new navy, building the most advanced warships for America, Europe, and allies worldwide, while proving that sometimes the most underestimated players create the most revolutionary capabilities. This is the story of Fincantieri, how Italy's floating hotel builder became the shipyard that the world's most powerful navies can't live without. By examining insider documents from Fincantieri's strategic transformation and naval intelligence spanning two decades, I uncovered something that will shatter your assumptions about who really controls global naval power. Because while everyone focused on traditional naval powers, Italy was quietly developing the modular warship technology that would make every other Navy want their designs. What I'm about to expose reveals why the US Navy's future literally depends on the Italian company that everyone dismissed as irrelevant to serious warfare. The story begins with a stereotype so deeply embedded in naval thinking that it nearly prevented one of the most important defense partnerships in modern history. To understand how wrong the assumptions were, you need to grasp how completely the industry misunderstood what Fincantieri actually represented in global shipbuilding. The dismissal was systematic and pervasive. Industry analysts consistently categorized Fincantieri as a luxury shipbuilder focused on passenger comfort rather than military precision. The assumption was that Italian shipyards understood entertainment and amenities but lacked the industrial sophistication for military applications that demanded reliability under combat conditions. What made this stereotype particularly limiting was how it ignored the fundamental engineering reality of modern shipbuilding. The same advanced systems integration required for luxury cruise ships, power management, environmental controls, complex logistics, were exactly the capabilities that next-generation warships would demand for extended operations. International naval conferences treated Fincantieri as a regional player rather than a serious competitor. Assuming that a company known for building passenger vessels could never master the precision required for naval combat systems. They saw civilian applications where they should have recognized advanced engineering capabilities. But in Fincantieri's design studios, engineers were quietly developing something that would make every naval assumption look outdated. They weren't just building ships, they were creating the modular, reconfigurable platforms that would define 21st century naval warfare. What Fincantieri developed would revolutionize naval architecture and prove that innovation comes from the most unexpected engineering backgrounds. The breakthrough was the PPA, Pattugliatore Polivalente d'Altura, a modular warship concept that could reconfigure its mission capabilities like changing software. Instead of building single-purpose vessels, Fincantieri created platforms that could transform from patrol ships to missile destroyers to command centers, depending on operational requirements. The engineering genius was hidden in plain sight. The same modular construction techniques used for cruise ship passenger decks became the foundation for reconfigurable weapon systems. The logistics expertise from managing thousands of cruise passengers translated perfectly to supporting complex naval operations with multiple mission profiles. But the most revolutionary innovation was digital integration that made traditional warships look primitive. Naval cockpit systems that allowed two operators to control ship and air operations simultaneously. The cruise ship company had created command and control capabilities that established naval powers couldn't match with their traditional approaches. Every modular component, every reconfigurable system, every digital innovation was proving that Fincantieri understood something about modern naval warfare that traditional military shipbuilders had missed. 
the future belonged to platforms that could adapt rather than ships designed for single purposes. But what happened when the U.S. Navy discovered these capabilities would validate every controversial design decision and transform American naval strategy? The moment when America's most powerful Navy validated Fincantieri's revolutionary approach came through a competition that surprised the defense industry and proved that innovation trumps tradition. The U.S. Navy's Constellation-class frigate program became the ultimate test of Fincantieri's transformation, competing against established American shipyards with decades of military contracts. The cruise ship company was bidding to build America's most advanced surface combatants, warships that would define U.S. naval power for the next 30 years. The validation was complete and impressive. Fincantieri's Frem-based design won the competition by demonstrating capabilities that American yards couldn't match. Modular construction that reduced costs, digital systems that enhanced performance, and proven reliability from ships already operating with allied navies worldwide. But the most significant vindication came from the contract details. Fincantieri Marinette Marine would build these frigates in Wisconsin, creating American jobs while using Italian innovation. The U.S. Navy wasn't just buying ships, they were adopting the modular warship philosophy that would reshape American naval strategy. The partnership proved that national naval power no longer depended solely on domestic shipbuilding traditions. The most advanced capabilities could come from international partners, and the cruise ship company had developed technologies that America's most established defense contractors wanted to learn from. But the American validation was just the beginning of global recognition that would transform Fincantieri from regional player to international naval architect. What emerged from Fincantieri's American success defied every assumption about how global naval power is distributed and who controls the technology that defines modern maritime warfare. The international response was immediate and comprehensive. Egypt ordered advanced Frem frigates for Mediterranean operations. Qatar selected Fincantieri corvettes for Persian Gulf security. Indonesia chose Italian designs for their expanding naval capabilities. And India partnered with Fincantieri for next-generation submarine technology. The global adoption proved that Fincantieri hadn't just won individual contracts. They had become the preferred architect for nations building modern naval capabilities. The modular, digital, reconfigurable approach that traditional shipbuilders had overlooked was now the standard that every serious Navy wanted to adopt. But the most remarkable validation came from NATO integration. Fincantieri ships operating with American, French, British, and Allied navies in joint operations, the cruise ship company had created platforms so advanced that they became the backbone of Western naval cooperation. Every international contract, every successful deployment, every operational integration proved that naval innovation could come from unexpected sources and reshape global maritime power. The company that everyone had stereotyped as irrelevant to serious warfare had become indispensable to the world's most powerful navies. The transformation from cruise ship builder to global naval architect was complete, permanent, and irreversible. Today, while defense analysts still focus on traditional naval powers, Fincantieri's quiet dominance has fundamentally altered who controls the technology that defines modern naval warfare. The transformation statistics reveal an incredible story. 22,500 employees supporting 90,000 jobs globally, 8.1 billion euros in revenue, 18 shipyards operating on four continents. The regional Italian company had evolved into a global naval technology leader that spans every major maritime region. Modern naval operations continue validating Fincantieri's revolutionary approach. When navies need modular platforms for changing threats, they choose Italian designs. When allies require interoperable systems for joint operations, they specify Fincantieri integration. When emerging naval powers plan fleet modernization, they partner with the company that redefined what warships can accomplish. The planned production extending through the 2040s proves that quiet dominance creates lasting strategic advantage. 
next-generation destroyers, advanced submarine technology, autonomous naval systems that will define maritime warfare for decades. Every ship delivered, every technology transfer, every international partnership confirms that Fincantieri didn't just overcome stereotypes, they created new realities that traditional naval powers must adapt to or risk falling behind. The quiet architect of NATO's new Navy has become the indispensable partner that no serious maritime strategy can ignore. Fincantieri's journey from dismissed cruise ship builder to indispensable naval architect demonstrates how breakthrough innovation emerges when engineering excellence overcomes industry stereotypes. For two decades, this company has proven that the most revolutionary capabilities often come from sources that established powers completely underestimate. Consider this question. If you'd been evaluating naval contractors in 2010, would you have recognized the potential in Italy's cruise ship company when industry assumptions dismissed them as irrelevant? Would you have seen the modular warship revolution hiding behind the luxury liner stereotype? Fincantieri's story teaches us that transformative innovation requires looking beyond surface assumptions to recognize engineering capabilities that transcend traditional categories. Sometimes the most powerful military technologies emerge from civilian expertise that established defense contractors never thought to consider. If this quiet dominant story amazed you the way it amazed me, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Your support helps me uncover these hidden transformation stories that reveal how global power really shifts when nobody's paying attention. Do you think Fincantieri proves that the most important innovations come from unexpected sources that established powers overlook? Or was this just exceptional execution that overcame natural disadvantages? Tell me your opinion in the comments, because this debate about where breakthrough capabilities really originate is reshaping how we understand competitive advantage in every strategic industry. Remember, the next time someone dismisses a competitor because they don't belong in your industry, they might be revealing their own blind spots about capabilities that could make them obsolete.